you go, Adiola. Thanks to all those who subscribed. Oshay, by the way, is very grateful to all of you that have subscribed. And he's also grateful to those of you that will subscribe as you are watching. Please, we are waiting for you to press the subscribe button. Thank you very much. You know, as well. You guys know I like to start with good news. Well, every now and then. <laughs> so please give it up for my sister from another Mada and Tibuki. Eh, Buki Shonibare. You know, I do well. One of the conveners of Bimraka Girls Movement. I mean, all you need to do is visit her social media page. She's still counting the number of days it's been since Chibo girls and Leah were kidnapped, constantly protesting for these girls. Anyway, she went back to school to study law. I guess she wants to be able to do more than protest, which is amazing. I don't know how many degrees she has, but I know this is not her first degree. And guess what? She graduated with fourth class. Oh, Shay, we are very proud of you, my sister. That is how you do it. A lot of her classmates also testified that she was constantly organizing study groups for everybody so that everybody would pass. I was like, wow. So I wasn't surprised that she graduated with fourth class. Kudos to you, my sister. We are very proud of you. Now, if I ever need a lawyer, I know who to call. Okay. <laughs> so, and speaking of good news, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first lady of Enugu State who has a foundation called Ugo's Touch of Lives Foundation. So, her foundation made news recently because they constructed tippy taps for students of Amechi Primary School in Okunano Community in Enugu State. How cool is that? Thank you, Yae, Mrs. Monica Umwai, in case you are watching. I mean, sorry, your excellency. Her excellency, that is, that is what I should say. I think that is wonderful. She wants kids to be able to wash their hands. She calls her campaign Global Hand Washing. This thing is about to go global. I'm telling you, they were shouting about this thing everywhere. You know, they usually invite media when they are doing things like this. So they've been shouting about this thing everywhere. The only thing is, Nigerians are not impressed. I don't, I don't get it. No offense, Jare, your excellency, in case you're watching, but you know how people are. You know how Nigerians are. They've been talking, for example. They are saying, Hello, you teeny. Are your eyes not pushing you? It looks like this girl was not impressed. Did you see her face? Is this what your own children are using at the private schools that you send them to or abroad? That you send them to? They are even saying that as a governor's wife, you can afford to build toilets with faucets, sinks for these kids to wash their hands. Then you just think that you are insulting our intelligence because tomorrow now they may say that they spent millions of naira on this project. But me, I'm not crucifying this woman i'm not honestly i actually think it's a good thing that she's at least she's trying to help you know because i went on her foundation's instagram page and i saw that she has done other things like providing backpacks with study materials for students in various schools organizing medical outreaches in different places according to her instagram page she organized more than 40 medical outreaches in rural places of enugu last year she educates women about female genital mutilation and campaign against it she educates women to get vaccinated for HPV she gives out mosquito nets she also refurbished and equipped a cervical cancer screening center in Unsuka so she's done many other things I don't know her by the way I don't know her at all I did I've never spoken to her and I'm not trying to defend her but I just feel bad that people only see one project that she did so maybe this tippy tap was a mistake I don't know but then I noticed that she has a lot of that on her Instagram page so um auntie in case you're watching me I think you have done well so maybe this one was just a mistake so maybe next time just <laughs> So maybe next time, just do something of better standards. Anyway, speaking of standards, so Nigerian government wants to start importing doctors from abroad, from America and Europe. I'm like, what the heck, you know? Although now I'm hearing that they are saying that they did not say that they will import doctors. <laughs> I'm getting tired. Honestly, something is seriously wrong with the medulla oblongata of the photosynthesis of the brains of so many Nigerian officials. And my father's in government, Mr. President, in case you're watching, the vice president, the minister of health, all the ministers, all the lawmakers. In case you're watching, I greet you. I, I greet I greet you special. Please move closer because you don't want all these young people, all these young Nigerians, lazy Nigerians. You don't want them to think that maybe something is wrong up here. Me, I don't think so. But, you know, all these young people, they like to talk. Hey, baby, you refuse to pay Nigerian doctors well. You refuse to provide them with necessary equipment, which is why so many of them are running out of the country where they're getting paid. But you can afford to bring doctors from America and Europe. Ah, hey, ah, don't make me. Ah, hey, tell you, I am dying. An average doctor in America makes between $200,000 to $1 million per year, depending on location and specialty. Not all of them make $1 million by the way, before you start calling them asking for money, I'm just saying. <laughs> 
Doctors are well treated in America, in Europe, every, even in Canada. Remember, I told you one time like this that doctors in Canada protested because they were getting paid too much money. I, I have never seen anything like that ever in my life for people to protest because they are getting paid too much money. Some reports are saying that average salary of doctors in America is about two hundred and ninety-four thousand dollars per year. In fact, let's assume that they are making one hundred thousand dollars per year. Okay, how much is that in Naira? Thirty-six, thirty-six million Naira. Thank you very much. That means they are getting about three million naira per month you get what i'm saying that is what doctors are making in america let's say that we bring one thousand doctors to nigeria which is not enough because it's a country of almost 200 million people so let's assume that they bring just one thousand if they bring one thousand and this one thousand are collecting one hundred thousand dollars because nobody will take a job where they will collect less money especially when they need to relocate to another country that means they will be spending one hundred million dollars on these doctors just for one year in naira that is 36 billion naira just for 1000 doctors in one year but way, how much is our budget for health in nigeria as in they could just give the whole health budget to foreigners so if you're willing to pay more for foreigners instead of just paying our own people well so that they could do the job and equip the hospitals you must be crazy for you to do that you must be crazy i'm not abusing you i'm just saying you keep telling us that there is no money but you want to bring foreign doctors look at all these nigerian officials the thunder that will fire all of you is doing press up right now. It's getting ready. Ben, don't you know that Nigerian doctors are doing amazing things around the world? Hardly would you see any major hospital in America where there are no Nigerian doctors and nurses. Ah, Nigerian nurses are doing baby in America. In fact, I once featured a Nigerian that has an emergency clinic in Texas, Dr. Foyekemi Ikiato. And you know what? They are very good at their job. Nigerian doctors are really good in what they are doing. I told you that a Nigerian doctor Dr. Olu Yinka Olutoye took out an unborn baby, performed surgery on the baby, and put the baby back in her mother's womb, and she carried this baby full time and delivered the baby. Of course, when the baby was born, we all knew that she was born again. You get what I'm saying? You see what I did right there? He graduated from OAU in IFEP. You see what I'm saying? Also, a Nigerian doctor, Dr. Bennett Omalu, was the one that first diagnosed concussion among American footballers. There's a whole movie about this Nigerian man, played by Will Smith as in ah, and he also graduated from the University of Nigeria Unsuka. A Nigerian doctor Dr. Lufumilaya Olokpade is the director of the University of Chicago's Cancer Risk Clinic. She's the head of the whole cancer research as in and this woman graduated from the University of Ibadan. Clearly they are getting good training in Nigeria. They just don't have the right equipment but the moment they leave Nigeria and have access to the right equipment, research labs, research resorts, current medical journals and many other resources including stable electricity they do wonders <laughs> so we don't need to import doctors Abba. in fact it's not just doctors that do well outside Nigeria so many Nigerian athletes are now representing several countries you know like Anthony Joshua Kamaru Usman Israel Adesoya the first black female NASA engineer to earn a PhD in aerospace engineering in American history is a Nigerian Dr. Wendy Okolo as in the president of Toronto Raptors in Canada. Masai Ujiri is a Nigerian. A Nigerian plastic surgeon in Canada, Dr. Bingpe Ayeni, is so good in breast reconstruction, especially for victims of breast cancer. She's able to reconstruct the breast. She's so good that she even has her own private practice. In Canada, I can go on and on about how Nigerians excel outside the country without knowing anybody or giving any bribe. Not that Nigerians don't make it in Nigeria, not that they don't excel in Nigeria, but when you import doctors, don't forget to also import stable electricity because these foreign doctors don't know how to work with generators, okay? They, they need stable electricity. <laughs> you also need to import good roads. Otherwise, they may leave after a week because they are not used to driving in portals. And above all, Nigerian government, please, you should make sure that you also import common sense because you need it. <laughs> this government, this government really needs common sense. By the way, I thought that they wanted us to be patronizing made in Nigeria product. That's why they closed the border. What about equipping Nigerian doctors? So we can patronize Nigerian doctors. Eh? I beg, I beg. Stop deceiving yourself, so Jare. <laughs> you guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on. 
to Ivory Coast, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for this 40-year-old painter, Adama Traore, who is inspiring people all over the world for not letting the fact that he was born without arms and legs stop him from making a living for himself. I am a painter. My painting is based on nature and villages. With these beautiful colors, the sky, it all gives me strength to live. How inspiring is that? The man refused to be a beggar. Did you see his paintings? I paint small and large paintings and people come to pay. Oh my goodness. Unfortunately, he's had to deal with so many obstacles, such as transportation. Nobody, not even the government, thinks of us about means of transport. We must fight like everyone else. Wow, that must be sad. And you know what? Kudos to a taxi man that picks him up and takes him home. Taxi driver Dauda Kone drops him to and from work every day. Every day, I pick him and drop him off. And in the evening again, I take him back home. Honestly, money doesn't matter. It's all about courage. Now, it's rare to find people like that. Honestly, kudos to that taxi man. Believe it or not, it's also hard for him to clean a toilet by himself because he has no hands. And there's no toilet for people with disabilities. There are no toilets for the disabled in this country. But my friends and brothers help to clean the toilet for me before going there. It is very hard for me. When the toilet is not clean, I get rashes. Poor guy. And I'm sure it's also a challenge to scratch himself if he's itching from the rashes. But he didn't let any of that stop him. He has his own painting studio. Adama Traore says his painting has helped him keep off the streets. He slowly saved up some money for his artwork and used it to open a small art studio. And his paintings start from $84, by the way. I'm like, wait. His paintings cost about $84 and above. It would be so nice if we all patronize this man. I don't know how to contact him. If you do, please let us know. But he needs our patronage so that he can pursue his ultimate dream of creating a space where people with disabilities can learn skills. For me, being disabled is in the head. My dream is to create a center for the disabled to train. I would like people to help me realize my biggest dream. You know, I look forward to that center opening because I know that it will happen someday. In the meantime, we need to do better in so many African countries, not just in Ivory Coast, when it comes to people with disabilities, because it could be anybody. Not all of them were born like that. Anything can happen to anybody. It hurts me a lot. In Africa, many people denigrate the disabled. So it makes sense to have facilities for people with disabilities at our banks, our schools, our churches, our mosques, all public places all over Africa. Once again, we're so proud of this man. Kudos to him. You guys not doing much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So are you guys following the story of Tinubu and the bullion van? Gege. <laughs> This is the picture that surfaced during the elections. Two billion vans entering Tinubu's compound on the eve of the election. And one channel TV reporter, Shimo Kimbaloe, asked him about it. This is what he said. The allegations are that those billion vans carry money or ballot. Excuse me. To rig is the it my money or government money? I don't work for government. I'm not in agency of government. Ah, wow. So, even if I have uh, money to spend in my premises, uh, what's your headache? <laughs> <laughs> wow. You see how he just dismissed this like it's nothing. So can William Vance just enter somebody's house like that and EFCC will not be after the person? And when people started asking about the source of the money in the bullion van, in fact, there was a protest in Abuja where some people submitted a petition that EFCC should prosecute Tinubu over the money. Do you know that while they were trying to submit that petition, two EFCC security men with guns 
seized and dragged the cameras from the journalists that were at this protest. Can you imagine, once again, they manhandled journalists in Nigeria. Is it wrong to ask questions, considering how all these policemen and SSS and all the soldiers and EFCC are very quick to go after young people in Nigeria, calling them Yahoo boys, even killing innocent guys because of dreadlocks and maybe because they have earrings on. Somebody had bullion vans in his premises and he just dismisses like that, like it's nothing. Nigeria needs a revolution, my people. And I'm not from Lagos, but the people of Lagos, you also need a revolution. In fact, this government has been very hostile towards journalists. If you guys have noticed, not only that, some Nigerians are now saying that this government is starting to behave like kidnappers. No, be me so calm, she understand. <laughs> Who am I to say anything? As you guys know, Nigerians, they like to talk. Hey, baby, look at how they arrested. <laughs> look at how they arrested Omo Yele Shore and asked for 100 million naira, refusing to release him despite court orders. And now they brought the money down to 50 million. Isn't that what kidnappers do? They kidnap somebody and then they negotiate and then they bring down the price. You know, I'm not calling Nigerian government kidnappers. <laughs> But they are starting to act like kidnappers. That is why people are calling them kidnappers. So it's almost 90 days now since Jure was detained. Almost three months. They've kept this man from his children, his wife, for saying that we need a revolution. Are you kidding me? To think that this same president lost election three times and he cried. And he cried. He cried. He has forgotten all of that. Now he's doing whatever he wants. Now the military has announced that starting this November, that they are launching a nationwide operation of veterans citizens identification cards they're gonna start asking for people's ids i'm like what the heck and they said that this is to fish out insurgents and expose criminals the funny thing is they tweeted this with their official instagram handle and then some days after they used the same twitter handle their official twitter handle to tweet that this was a fake alert and we were like <laughs> you guys are confused so for real we don't know maybe they will still do it or not but just so bad you know in case he's watching the way things are going, the military may take over. No, be me talk calm. I'm just saying, you're not doing your job well. People are hungry. And now the military wants to be on the streets in the name of checking for people's IDs. Is that? I don't, I don't get it. You better get your ass together. As for my people in Niger, and Nigerian soldiers being on the streets to check for IDs, to me, it's a violation of human rights, okay? But the problem is, Nigerian soldiers only hear go, they don't hear come. No offense to those in the Nigerian army, you know, do well. But it's very hard for us to trust Nigerian soldiers. <laughs> they will say that they are checking IDs, but they may start beating people who forget their IDs at home. So please, get your ID if you don't have one, and make sure you carry it at all times, because you just never know where this is leading. Anyway, you guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Uganda, my Uganda. Do you guys know that some women are now charging their husbands about $6 for sex? <laughs> Father. <laughs> Between three to six dollars, that is how much these women are charging their husbands per session for sex. <laughs> Actually, this has been going on now for some years. It actually started because some men were not responsible in taking care of their wives and children. Meanwhile, they were spending money on prostitutes outside. I'm guessing because they don't take care of the home, they were not getting kiss kiss, you know, from their wives. <laughs> Anyway, a few women decided instead of depriving him sex because he's really responsible, well, he's paying another woman for sex outside anyway, so why not start charging him between three to six dollars per session? <laughs> To make the husband see reason they tell him honey this money is to take care of your children to pay school fees to prepare food before you come back you should pay now and since you are paying for the kiss kiss you know you get to enjoy it better so <laughs> oh my god i can't even imagine that conversation anyway <laughs> but you will be surprised to know that this method is working or as in it's working for so many women so much so that more than 31,000 women are now doing this 31,000! That's according to Stella Muyana, the chairperson of Bakazibano. That's a Ugandan women's rights organization. She said that her organization has recorded more than 31,000 cases of women that are now doing this. I tried, <laughs> I tried to look up how much prostitutes are charging in Uganda just to compare. <laughs> 
to compare it with the wives, you know. I, I found out that some prostitutes can be more expensive. So they charge like $3 to $8. But some prostitutes charge more than $8. So I guess the men weighed their options and they realized, you know what, it's cheaper to do this thing at home. <laughs> Plus, it's more convenient. And so they started paying up, you know. In fact, I heard that some men have now become responsible husbands, taking care of their wives and children after the wives started charging them for sex. But, you know, I don't know if this is a good idea. Honestly, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's a good idea. Considering the fact that some men may rough handle and abuse their wives in the name of Shebi already paid you, you know. In fact, I read that some men actually beat their wives if she talks about the idea of getting paid for sex not only that i read that some husbands have actually killed their wives which is why another organization in uganda called the mother's union that's a christian charity organization with 3,000 members in over 335 churches in uganda is now teaching women through its branches across the country to first of all explain to their husbands that the demands for this money <laughs> are in the family's interest they tell them this money that they're asking for is in the interest of the family and then they teach them to how to let the husband know that it's not a challenge to men so they are getting training on how to approach their husbands about collecting money before sex <laughs> This is deeper than I thought. Anyway, a lot of priests and pastors are speaking out against this, that it's not right for women to charge their husbands for sex. You know what I think? My dear sisters, please, have your own job. Have your own source of income. Don't rely on a man to take care of you. It's even wrong to put all the burdens of the family on one person. Make yourself an asset, my sister. Get a job before you get married. Learn how to survive on your own. Learn how to pay your own bills. Learn to buy Buy things for yourself before you get married. It makes you a more responsible adult. And please don't marry someone who is already saying that he can't allow his wife to work. That's a major red flag right there. And don't think that he's joking or he will change his mind. Because some men are not man enough to marry a woman that makes her own money. They feel threatened. I don't know why. <laughs> And you know, some men don't want their wives to make more money than they do. Better run for your life, my sister, because such a person has an ego that you cannot tame. Don't marry someone that will not let you be all that you can be or pursue your dreams. You end up living in regret. Also, many people need to know about family planning. Please, don't have kids that you cannot afford to take care of yet. You don't have to have them if you are not ready to take care of them. The meaning of family planning is planning for a better future, not just letting things happen on their own because there's consequences for everything but maybe we'll talk about that another time but a child is not supposed to be a burden they're supposed to bring you joy anyway let me know what you guys think about this ugandan women charging their husbands for sex <laughs> would you do something like that and if your wife should charge you <laughs> will you pay up <laughs> let me know in the comment section below you guys not doing much guess what i'm just keeping it real so have you guys heard about Tunde Learning on Farms? Oh shit! I'm so excited to tell you guys about Tunde Learning on Farms. That is making a new kind of gari that is making waves. You may be wondering why I'm excited about gari. <laughs> First of all, it's a staple food in Nigeria, in West Africa, in so many African countries. If you've never tasted gari, you are missing out. Okay? <laughs> and for those of us that live in America, ah, it is gold when we see gari every now and then. You know we like to soak gari with kuli kuli, especially this one, by the way. Don't think I did not know how you were sneaking in to take all my kuli kuli, you will answer. Anyway, this uh, gari is different because, first of all, they plant the cassava themselves. It's not like they buy already processed gari or they buy cassava from somewhere. I'll tell you more about the cassava that they're using later. It's different from the regular cassava. So they process everything themselves, making sure to observe proper hygiene so you won't have to worry about whether the gari was produced under proper hygiene. That is very important. And they roast the gari themselves. Also, their gari is very, very dry. As in, say, look, gari is bare. Ah, you guys need to see this. Gari is bare, gari. Making sure that it is very, very dry. Also, the way they package their gari, the packaging that they use 
preserves the quality of the garlic so that it doesn't smell after some months and no they don't add any preservatives or any chemicals they just make sure that it is very very nice now the best part is they plant and use the new cassava bridge that are highly nutritious and better for human consumption you know their own yellow garlic is produced from vitamin a nutritious yellow cassava bridge so it's not like they add palm oil no they are not adding any palm oil and it's not just the yellow one that they have they have the yebu white one make sure that you check them out if you're an international student or share god don't butter your bread or maybe you just moved to america anywhere you are in the u.s you can order their gari on amazon in fact i went on their amazon just to try it and i found out that they have next day shipping so that you can get it within two days so you can order the gari and it will be delivered to your house if you live in nigeria they are supplying all over nigeria you know <laughs> they they also have it in so many African stores in Florida. So if you live in Florida, you can just go and pick your own. I'm very jealous of those of you that live in Florida. Anyway, this is very important because food is very important. <laughs> but you know the best part is, don't forget that you can order this gari on Amazon and you can have it delivered to your house within a day or two. I'm really excited for these people. The only problem is now that I've talked about gari and kuli kuli, this one is already eyeing. The kuli that I have in the cover, you know that that is the liar. Don't even think that you are smart. I'm going to fight it, but you know, I don't joke with my gari and kuli anyway you guys can contact them and visit their instagram page by the way to know more about their products i'm always excited to see africans doing business in america i want them to succeed you guys don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real don't forget to download SendWave if you're yet to. It's the fastest way of sending money to Nigeria, Ghana, Tanzania, Kenya, and Uganda without paying any transaction fees. And when you use my name, Adiola, as promo code, you get $5 added to whatever you're sending to your loved ones. So please download SendWave if you're yet to. All right, y'all, it's Vero, and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to subscribe. And eh? how else do you want me to say it? <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe for all my uncles and aunties that are yet to subscribe. Until next time, I'm going to see you all later. Peace.